Okay, in the last video, we got a extractor for um, uh, just JSON data, but what if we want to validate that JSON data? Like, for example, if we take our uh, username and password they're sending in, what if we wanna make sure that this is an email address? Uh, that the password has to be a minimum of, I don't know, eight characters long or, or 12 characters long or just whatever we want. Well, that that's kind of going to be important for us to do outside of the handler itself um, so we can validate it. That way, if it reaches the handler, we know that it's good. Uh, so we're going to use a custom JSON extractor. So I've gone ahead and I've already created a... Um, a ThunderClan to request for this. Uh, and we're getting, of course, a 404 not found because this doesn't exist yet. Uh, let's go ahead and create that. So I'm gonna call this the custom JSON extractor. I'm gonna go into mod and mod this. And let's do a pub async function custom JSON extractor. Um, we are gonna return, uh, I don't know necessarily that we need to return anything right now because we're really just focused on the extraction and maybe handling the validations. So um, uh, we can, I mean, maybe return like the JSON of what we what we take in, uh, but let's let's not worry about that right now. We'll just, we'll just do our, our sort of hello world 200 one right now. Okay, back to Hugh. And we'll do a dot route. Uh, so this was for custom JSON extractor. And we're gonna do a post to custom JSON extractor. Well, that means I need to pull it in with a use statement. Okay, uh, happy, happy here. Let's come in here and talk about, uh, well, let, let's make sure. Okay, we got our 200 okay, but we're not getting any validation type stuff. So let's like one step at a time, let's uh, create our struct for the JSON data coming in. So we know that this is gonna be a struct with a username and a password inside of it. And we're going to have to use survey to derive that out. So we're going to uh, derive deserialize uh, needs to have this actually be a struct first. So pub struct, uh, we're gonna call this a request user, just like uh, a previous. Uh, now I can bring in deserialize. Import deserialize, okay, great. So we're gonna have a uh, I don't really need it to be pub or or not. So we're going to have a username that needs to be a string. And we're going to have a password that also needs to be a string. Excellent. Okay. Uh, they're never read. Just to make that this error go away, I'm going to make these public. Okay. Now, if I want to implement a custom um, well, one of the reasons for custom is this validation. So we can go two ways. I can implement the custom first and then the validation, um, or I can implement the validator and then do that. Let's, let's implement, uh, the, the custom extractor first, even though it doesn't really do anything special. And then I'll add the validation inside of it. Now, if we go to the documentation, and this is the local documentation, um, from my downloaded installed uh, uh, creates. And so in Axum, we're going to go to extractors and notice that it says an extractor is a type that implements from requests. So we're going to implement this ourselves manually. Now, this first example here is a little bit, a little bit tough to read. It has pin and boxes and dying futures, and it looks really hard to use. So uh, we're going to skip that and go down here where we actually see that there's this async trait macro that we can use. That means that we can now have this async function and it feels so much easier to use. Okay, so that's nice. I'm just gonna uh, copy this. 
Now I noticed that this async trait comes from axum async trait. So that's just, uh, that's just what we, uh, we care for. So I'm gonna put in async trait. We're gonna have to pull that in. So import async trait from axum. Uh, impull from request from uh, extract. So axum extract from request. Uh, instead of my extractor, this is going to be request user. Now it has where B is send. That's fine for right now, but we're going to have to change that in a little in a little bit. Um, for rejection, I actually don't want this to just be a status code. Uh, when we reject this, I want want to have a message coming in as well. So I'm going to have a tuple type where we have a status code. And just uh, for right now, we'll just do a string. But this could, of course, be uh, JSON as well. OK, next up, we have async uh, function from request. I like to change this to be just a full out spelled out request. Uh, request parts, OK, so we need to pull that in. And now it's yelling us that we're not actually returning what we say they're going to turn. So let's put a to do in here really quickly to uh, to handle that. And now it's just yelling us that we're not using the request. OK, so if I want to extract out the request user from this request, um, we can do that by, uh, well, manually calling extract on this request. So let's let's do this as we want a JSON user equals our request dot extract is a method that we can call on here. And we have to say that it's going to be JSON. And inside of that, it's this request user. That's exactly the same as before putting in uh, JSON user colon JSON request user. Uh, and so far, this is no different than we did in the last video, except it's just more, more work. OK, that gives us um, a Extract gives us a result, but it's also asynchronous. So we have to await this. Um, and now it gives us a result, but it's the wrong kind of result. We want to return it to this type of um, error. So we're going to do a, oh, nope, not overwrite you. We're going to do something called a map. What are you yelling at me about? Uh, what I sometimes like to do is come here and just take a look at what we have. So we have this result. So I do the await. Oh, look at this. The trait bound BHP body is not satisfied. Well, at this point in time, I could just start playing with this B colon send to sort of uh, make sure that the, the generic B is exactly what we want it to be. But if we come back to our documentation and uh, we look down far enough, implementations on foreign data type. So take a look at this. Impl b from request b for string. So if we're taking the string, this is exactly what we would need to bind b to. Well, let's scroll down until we find JSON, which uh, of course is at the very bottom here. What we can see here. Impl T and B. So there's two generic types for this, but from request only takes B here. This JSON takes T. So if we tell JSON exactly what it is, I only need to uh, really like lock down B to these three things. So HTTP body plus end, uh, B colon colon data send, and B colon colon error into box error. Okay, so I'm going to copy those. And where this is, this B send, I'm going to replace you. Now, when I do this, HP body, we need to import you and we need to import box error. OK, everything is happy again, and I can bring this back to a JSON user again. OK, mismatch types. Um, so I want to map this error. And so we have our error here. And I want to return a tuple type that has the status code. 
Uh, let's do a bad request. And uh, let's format this error to be whatever, whatever it is. So it's a JSON rejection. So I'm going to use the format macro. Uh, and we're going to pass in the error here. Uh, now, at this point in time, I can do a question mark. And that will give us the actual JSON type. OK, great. Now I have this user that I'm not using, and I can replace you with a OK and OK user. And that is now manually implementing the extractor to give us the user here. So I can now, at this point in time, say I want our user, uh, which is going to be a uh, request user. No like special JSON or anything else at this point in time. Uh, and let's say I just want to maybe debug uh, this user. And that's it. I don't care about anything else. Um, oh, this request user doesn't implement debug. Let's change that. Debug. So if I open up you again, we hit our request. We now see our request debugged out, the JSON. Um, for this. Okay, excellent. But we're still not validating data. So I have a create suggestion for this. Um, there is a create called validator, which uh, is decently popular. Um, and it allows us to use macros to mark parts of a struct as uh, validating. And we need to use a custom extractor to really get the most out of this uh, validator. Otherwise, we need custom validation logic in our route handler, which we don't want. So let's go ahead and add validator in. And we're going to have to bring in the derive feature. So it already shows us that we need that. So let's go ahead and add this in ourselves. So I want cargo add u dash f derive. Now there's some other things that we could bring in, but we're not going to need them for this specific um, for this exercise. Once that's in here, we can now begin using it like this, we can now bring in a validate part of this derive. So for our custom request user, we want validate. And then inside of the username, our documentation shows that we can do this validate with email here. Okay. So validate, uh, we want email like that. Um, for password, we might want the length. Uh, so in the documentation, they actually have a list of all the validators down here. So we have email and length, which then we have this function part of length, which can pass it a minimum, for example. So let's do that. Validate length min equals, let's say, eight. That's great and all, but we want a custom error message because whatever they're going to hand us is probably not what we would want to then display to the front end as an error. So if we continue to scroll down, we'll eventually find where they do use um, messages. And that's all the way at the bottom. Messages and code. So each validator can take two optional arguments in addition to their own, which is a message and they show an example of this here. So for email, we could have a code, we don't care about that, but then message here. So for email, I want to turn this into a function message equals uh, invalid, um, like or maybe uh, must be a uh, valid email. And you, so we min message equals um, must have at least eight characters. 
Okay. Now I save this, but we need to actually validate you. So once I have the user extracted out, uh, we can then run a validate method on it, which, which will hand us an error with the, well, the, the errors on it. So let's do an if let error. Uh, we want these errors equals, it's gonna be our user dot validate. So this has been added in for us because we added this validate uh, derive macro here. Now, if we have any errors, I simply want to just return a new error. So we're just gonna return uh, an error. Uh, now the error is this tuple type with a status code, bad request. And then the other thing is gonna be the error. So we want to format and pass it in the errors. Uh, it's gonna grab the messages based upon what is wrong here. So we have two things wrong and it's gonna give us a single string with both of them in here. If we get past this guard here, then we return the okay user. So we're gonna hit send, we're gonna come back to here. We have two problems. And now if I hit okay, we have 400 bad requests and password must have at least eight characters. Username must be a valid email. There is no guarantee what order these error messages are gonna come back in. Uh, let's change this to be a valid uh, username. So if I just do like b at b.com, send, okay, well now it's a password. That's not doing too great. So if I send you, now we get our 200 okay. And if we take a look at our cargo watch, we now get our debug, whereas before we weren't getting that. So using this custom extractor, we're able to prevent the, uh, prevent the handler from being run at all unless it passed validation. And this is, in my opinion, one of the strongest use cases for implementing your own uh, extractor is just to run this custom validation logic on the server side. And, uh, and that's it. Like all the extra logic you wanna do now in the validator, or sorry, in the handler, absolutely you can do. I really wanted to show you that you can do this here. Uh, creating your own extractor is really not that hard as long as you know where to look in the database to find exactly how to create the extractor and sort of lock down the generics. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that this has been helpful um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.